Well, today I think I'm going to see what I can do with this piece of mimosa. I got this with about five or six other pieces about four and a half years ago. It's a local group and I think most areas have it. It's called Next Door. So I saw that on Next Door and it wasn't that far from where I live. So I drove over, grabbed what I could get and I turned maybe three pieces of it. It's just beautiful wood. This one's kind of odd. It's about nine and a quarter long and it's anywhere between three and four inches in diameter. What I really like here is this area right there and I want to try to keep that. I have an idea. I don't know if it's going to work or not but I'm going to get this mounted up in the lathe. I've got a crazy way to mount it and uh, we'll see what we can make out of it. I'll be right back. I put it up against the tin and I put a piece of plywood here so I didn't dig the center in and then I just knocked it around until it's balanced this way and I'll be getting stock turned off of here and I'll just decide where to stop. This might get round up here. I'm not even certain about that. It looks like it might because that sticks up. Whatever it is, I'm going to do it because I just think this is cool. I could just leave it the way it was. But mimosa is beautiful wood and I do want to get some of that heartwood showing. Okay, I think we're going to go ahead and see what happens here. I'm going to start with this spindle roughing gouge. It's uh, one and a quarter inch. Doing about 700 RPM, I think. This is kind of just what I was imagining. I like that. I like this little stripe coming around here like that. We might have it right where we want it. Well, I think it's looking great. I don't think we're going to have too much trouble here with leaving that little section. I also would like to go ahead and expose all of the wood right up to the top, I think. Let's find out. Eight hundred and sixty RPM now. I think I'm going to cut this out a little bit. It's looking too much like a bottle. Just a little bit. This is starting to look just the way I was hoping. Eight hundred and seventy RPM. the base down a little bit. Okay, I'll do that. I'm going to switch to a 5 8 bowl gab and just see if we can just cut this out. I like how it's coming down here. But uh, I can easily cut something out of that. All right.
Well, I think it looks pretty cool. But I also think it's getting late. We'll finish this tomorrow. Well, it is the next day and I just sharpened my negative rake scraper. And about all I need to do now is just kind of blend this in, smooth it up. I also think I didn't mention that once I put this in place and shifted it to get it where I wanted, I hot glued that to the tenon. So that's how it's attached. Let's go ahead and get this cleaned up and we'll sand it. And the last thing to do is to put a hole in here at 850 RPM. I think that's pretty good. I think we can go ahead and get this sanded up now. I'm going to start with the 80 grit. I'll have the lathe running in reverse at about 500 RPM. I don't want to go any slower. I don't want the disc to skip down here and hit that. I'll sand it up to 400, but I'm going to stop after the 80 grit and we'll see if we can get this cleaned up with the Sandiflex. I'm going to start the dust collector and we'll do a little sanding and I'll be right back to do this. Alright, I think this is 120 grit I have here. Alright, it's time to drill a hole in here and I am a little bit concerned because I see this kind of laying, this, these two areas here, they're laying on this center section. I don't know how big I can get and if something's going to fall apart, if I don't want this falling out of there. So I'm going to start with a 7 8 bit. We'll inspect it. If that's all I get in here, I'd rather have that than have this fall apart. So let's start out about uh, 350 RPM. So I just I hit something way softer than the beginning. So I am glad I started with a small bit. I actually have a Harbor Freight inspection camera. Maybe I can poke it in there and have a look. I went ahead and stopped when I went to this size bit. Put my steady rest on. I don't have a perfectly flat surface here. I could see it grabbing and breaking my hot glue joint loose and I sure don't want to do that. Well, I don't mind telling you that was a little bit creepy and I got it started now this will help hold it in place so I'm going to drill down about right there and we'll check that wall
that's it I'm not going any farther I'm not going any bigger because I I only have about uh, an eighth of an inch over this low spot back here all right I need to flatten this and then open it up a little bit and then maybe I'll actually do a little more shaping right here depends how this turns out About 600 RPM, it's actually running pretty smooth. This little 3 8 bowl gouge to try to avoid taking too big of a cut. That can pop off of there pretty easy. little cone going down in here that's probably as far as it needs to go so I'm going to remove this and see if I can get my live center against there and I want to take more material out right uh, right where these wheels are at actually all right I can't take a lot off right here but I can take about an eighth of an inch that will change that look a lot at least I hope so now we can turn the RPM back up about 840. I got that area reshaped, resanded. It's time to put some finish on it. A piece like this, I think, really looks good with shellac. So I've got some shellac based sanding sealer. See, there's the mimosa showing up there. It's just so unusual that wood is. If I get some on this hot glue, that's not a bad thing because it'll help it come apart. I just won't be turning the lathe on again because there's no reason to. Now I might be able to just rub it on here. That, that is pretty cool. I'll save my brush. I think I... I might have to poke it down in here. I'll get one of the little acid brushes and do that. Nothing to see on the inside, so I'm going to get another coat of this on and then I'll put some shellac on it. And we'll uh, come back and see how it looks standing up. See you pretty soon. Isn't that cool? I sure think so. Well, here it is. It is all done, and I think I'll call this the amazing vase. For one thing, mimosa has some amazing grain in it. See how that reflects back like that? And then look it over here. And I was pretty amazed that this didn't fall out. As I drilled the hole, it, when it hit that area, it was really soft feeling, so I was afraid it was just going to crumble, but it didn't, so I'm pretty happy with that. So it's seven and a half inches tall, three and a quarter inches maximum diameter, and right here the walls are slightly less than an eighth of an inch, so I didn't want to drill any more than that. And on the back side, I don't know what it is, it might be over a half inch, probably is for sure. There's the opening and I tapered that down in there. This could be used for dry flowers or 
I decided it's so hard to find tubes that fit what you do, so I 3D printed my own little liner. So we could put water in that and put live flowers in it. I used two coats of Zinsser Seal Coat and two coats of Zinsser Shellac. And then I decided to go ahead and take a paper towel and I buffed it out with the Axe Abrasive Paste. Here's the paste. I haven't signed that and I haven't even sanded it. And I don't think I'm going to sand it actually. As soon as I find my pen that I can write on that rougher wood, I'll uh, do that and I'll get a finish on it. So I'm really, really happy that I turned this. And making this happen isn't really that hard. I got it set up in the lathe and I just bumped it around and just rotated it until I could see I wouldn't cut here and I wouldn't cut there, and that's how you can leave something like this. So, for me, this was a lot of fun, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked the video, you can let me know by hitting that like button. Also, leave a comment and tell me what you think. I love reading them all, and I do my best to answer them all. If you're currently not subscribed, please consider doing so. If you are subscribed, thank you very much. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. I do all types of turnings, and I love doing them all. Let me know your favorites. Thanks again, and until the next time, see you later.